Hello everyone, welcome back to Talking History. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you all keep him well. My name's Liz, I am not an historian, I'm just someone who is extremely passionate about history and I love to share all of that passion with all of you. And before we get any further into today's video, I just want to apologise if you hear any banging or knocking or drilling a house opposite us is having a renovation and so i just want to apologize if we hear any of that i have got the windows closed but you can still hear it slightly so today's video today's video is all about the young queen of england the young queen of england was married to the young king of england henry and her name was Margaret of France. And if you'd like to know more about Margaret, then please do stay right where you are. Margaret was born in 1158 and Margaret was the third daughter born to King Louis VII of France. Margaret's mother was Constance of Castile who sadly died in childbirth giving birth to Alice, Margaret's younger sister in 1160 when Margaret was only two. Now only two weeks after the death of Constance King Louis married again. He married Adela, daughter of Count Theobald of Blois. Now, you know I can't pronounce that word no matter how many times I say it. It just, it, no, it just doesn't happen. So they married in 1160. Also in 1160, Margaret was betrothed to Henry II of England's eldest son and heir, Henry. Their betrothal was the work of the of Thomas Beckett's outstanding political skills. Young Henry was five when Margaret was two and they married on the 2nd of November 1160. Now unfortunately there's not much else on Margaret until 1170 when she was around 12 or 13. Margaret had been left behind in Normandy while Henry the young, well, he wasn't the young king yet. Henry was now 15. He was crowned as co-king of England at Westminster Abbey on the 14th of June 1170. The coronation would bring Henry II's Becket crisis to its tragic end. Margaret was not crowned alongside her husband at that time, but she would be crowned with him two years later in 1172 on the 27th of August at Winchester. Henry the Young King and his Queen spent Christmas of that year together in Normandy. In January 1173, the young Henry had joined his father at a diplomatic assembly where his father was negotiating a marriage for his youngest son, John. Henry was furious when his father tried to give John three castles that were on his land. Henry, he rebelled, leaving in the middle of the night, leaving Margaret behind at Sheenon Castle. Margaret remained with her father-in-law and Margaret appears again at Barfleur when she's with King Henry and her captive mother-in-law Eleanor of Aquitaine, her brother-in-law John and sister-in-law Joanna or slash Joan. They arrived at Southampton on the 8th of July and Margaret was sent to Device's castle. From there, she would learn about her husband de being defeated in the war without love. In 1177, Margaret, aged 19 or 20, had given birth to her and Henry's only child, a boy who they named William. Sadly, William was born premature and died shortly after. In around 1182 and 83, Margaret became the object of court gossip. Rumours were spreading that she was having an affair 
with her husband's most loyal knight friend and former tutor in arms, William Marshall. Now, whether they did or not is hard to say, but either way, William Marshall had escaped any serious consequences, but he was forced to leave his young king's court. In 1183, the young king was departing ready for Aquitaine. He had sent Margaret to Paris for her safety to her half-brother Philip II's court. Now, neither of them could have known that that would be the very last time they would see each other. In mid-June, Margaret had, would have received the news of her husband's death and there's nothing to say on how she had reacted. The chroniclers were silent on the young queen's grief. They purely focused on the old king's reaction. After the young Henry's death, Margaret's half-brother, King Philip II, had demanded the return of her dowry, the Norman Fexen. A conference was held between Philip II and Henry the Old King, and the terms they agreed on for Margaret was to receive £1,750 for quitting claims to the Fexen, all of the castles and fortresses given to her and her husband by Margaret's father, King Louis, on their marriage. Margaret would receive that payment, quote, each year at Paris from our Lord, the King of England and his heirs, as long as she lived. In 1184, Margaret visited her half-sister, Marie of Champagne. They spent Christmas with Marie and Queen Mother Adele. That visit had lasted for several months and Margaret visited again in 1186 before her marriage to Bela III of Hungary. I hope I pronounced that right and I apologise if I haven't. In around 1185, Bela III of Hungary's wife Agnes had died and it's not certain when Bela had approached Philip II about marrying his sister Margaret. Margaret left France in 1186 and she would never return. Margaret met Bela for the first time when she arrived in Hungary and he was 10 years older than her and he was very tall. He was six foot two, which was tall for that time. Bela, he was cultured. He was a very cultured man. He was raised at the Byzantine um, court and he was fluent in Greek. Now, it's unknown what Margaret did in Hungary. Margaret, though, didn't have any more children. Bela died in 1196 and Margaret went to the Holy Land, possibly on pilgrimage. It's not really known, but Margaret died in September 1197, aged 39 or 40. Margaret was buried alone in the Cathedral of Tyre, far away from the resting places of both of her husbands. And there is Margaret's story. It's a very short video for today. Unfortunately, there's just not enough known on that young woman, which is just the same through history, isn't it? There's just not enough known on some of those characters who deserve more recognition than what they get. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed today's short video and I will be back soon with another one. Please do like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so it notifies you every time I've uploaded a new video. But in the meantime, please do look after yourselves. Do something nice for yourselves. Just look after yourselves and I will see you soon in the next one. Take care. Bye.